Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Art Deco. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing about half of a three-player game today. Now, before we go into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support this channel and the creation of videos just like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and many of them come with perks like watching some videos early and advertisement-free, as well as voting on which of those videos are made, and there's a bunch of other perks as well that you can learn by checking that out. Uh, now, the final thing I'd like to ask is that if while you are watching this, any uh, turn really jumps out to you, like we should have done something differently, or maybe just some part of the game really jumps out to you as interesting, then please comment down below because I love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. And I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of this game. In it, each player is a high-stakes art collector, and this is a deck-building style game where we are going to be purchasing new pieces of art, as well as these gold cards over here, into our deck, and every time we go through our deck, we are going to shuffle up a new one from our discard pile. Now, on a player's turn, they must perform two actions, and there are three action options. The first involves haggling, which means you simply play a card to draw two cards from your deck, so you can dig into your deck to find something that you're looking for. The second option involves purchasing painting cards, or these gold cards over here. When you purchase cards, you have to pay a certain amount of currency, and you will pay for that with the cards that you have in your hand. The gold cards have a number, which simply tell you how much they are worth when you are purchasing things, but then the art cards in your hand can also be used for purchasing various other things. The value of these art cards is going to be dictated by the overall market rating for that specific genre of art. As these tokens goes up, the purchasing power of the matching cards will also go up, and they will be worth more victory points at the end of the game. These market ratings go up every time a painting of that specific type is purchased from this area, as well as every time a painting of that type is exhibited over here at the museum, which is the third action that you can do. When you exhibit, you permanently lose that card from your deck, but then you get victory points immediately, and the more exhibited cards we have, the more likely we are to unlock specific museum scoring tiles that are performed at the end of the game. So, every player must perform two actions on their turn, and then the next player will take their turn, and we are going to keep taking turns until one of the three endgame conditions are met. Those are when we go through this whole deck, or when 12 or more cards are up here at the exhibition, or once any of these tokens has reached the 70 position on the market rating board. At that point, we finish the round, so everyone takes the same number of turns, and then it will be time for final scoring. At that point, all of the cards that we have in our overall deck, hand and discard pile, are going to be scored. We will get victory points depending on where these tokens are on the market rating board, and you do get victory points for your gold cards that you still have in your hand, and that is based off of the gold rating that is also tracked over here on the market board. During final scoring, if any of these museum tiles have been unlocked, then we will get conditional points for those if we meet that condition, and then whoever has the most victory points will be the winner. Now, this is a very high-level overview. There's a bunch of things that I haven't talked about just yet, and I will describe everything in detail when we bump into them while playing. On that note, let's now start the game, and if it wasn't obvious enough, we are going to play as the purple player over here, and we are also the starting player for this game, so let's now take the first turn of the game. As you can see, these are the five cards that we have in our hand, and some of them are gold cards, while other ones are paintings. Now, we received a certain number of random paintings from the deck as part of setup, and then, depending on the player order, we also received certain numbers of these gold cards. You'll notice they all show a one in the top corner, because we are the first player in the game. Now, as I mentioned during the overview, on our turn, we must perform two actions, and when we perform an action, we're going to play the cards for that action into the action slot above our board so that we can easily see what we have played and what we still have in our hand. Now, for our first action of the turn, I think let's perform an acquire action. When we focus on our player board, it says that when we acquire, we can buy one available card from the board. When we acquire, we can purchase any of the cards over here on the board, even those that are deeper into these stacks of cards over here. Now, the price to purchase a card is this number in the top left corner. You'll notice these four areas have paintings, and over here in the financial district, there are these two banks where you can purchase these gold cards. The gold cards always have a fixed value that's printed on the board, or as the price for these paintings come with these variable tokens, which will increase as the game goes on. For this acquire action, I think we want to go to the Art Gallery Avenue to purchase one of these paintings. In particular, let's go to Gallery Cerulean. When we focus in more, you can see the price to purchase any of these paintings is going to be 3. 
in order to pay for this, we have to play cards from our hand. Now, these gold cards over here give us value equal to the number on them. So we could pay these two right here to get up to three. And we can also pay with the painting cards that we have in our hand. We have a Renaissance card and a Pop Art card. And we can tell how much value each of these is worth for purchasing things by looking over here at the market rating board. At the start of the game, there are genre tokens for the five genres over here at the zero, as well as a token for the gold rating. And when you look to the left of each one of these rows, you can see the purchase power. Power. Right now, every genre token is in the first row, so that means by definition, our Renaissance card and our Pop Art card are both going to be worth one monetary value for purchasing other things. Now, there is an easier way to tell how much purchase value we get for each of these paintings, and that is by looking at our player board. Every player has this in front of them, and it shows the five genre types, as well as the potential monetary value of those types. Now, every time one of the genre tokens on the market board increases to the next row, all players can then update the track in front of them. So if Art Nouveau reaches the second row of the market rating board, we can slide this up. And now at a glance, we can look down and see that any Art Nouveau cards in our hand are going to be worth two monetary value instead of one. Once again, this is essentially duplicating the information that shows up on the market rating board and making it easier at a glance to tell how much purchasing power you have from the paintings in your hand. Well, because we want to buy this Surrealism card over here, we do have to pay three value from our hand. And that means we could also do something like this with the Pop Art, the Renaissance, and this one gold card. Now, whenever you use cards for the monetary value, you put them into the associated action spot on top of your board. That is, unless you decide to use the special ability on gold cards. You may have noticed that on the one and two gold cards, as well as the threes over here on the board, there's special text at the bottom. And this is something that you can use when you meet the condition. But then once you perform it, you will permanently lose that card from your deck. If we take a closer look over here, you'll notice at the bottom of this one, it says we could get three purchase power if we buy one painting. Now that means instead of putting these three out and having all of them go into our discard pile, we can just play this one card here for the bottom effect. That will get us the three buying power that we need to purchase this Surrealism card. And then we lose this so that it is no longer in our deck. I think this is what we want to do on our first turn. So we are going to do the special ability here to gain that three purchase power. And now we can take the Surrealism card that we just purchased. That is going to go into the action area associated with the action that we took. This was the first action of our turn, so that will be placed over here along with any of the other cards that we might have used on our turn to actually pay for it. Obviously, we paid for this one with a single card that was then removed from our deck. After purchasing a painting, we then have to modify the market rating for that specific genre. In this case, at Gallery Cerulean, every time we purchase a painting from here, we increase the rating of that genre by three. So we can find the Surrealism Market Rating Token and then move that three spaces over on this rating track. Now, at the moment, that has not actually had an effect on the game, but once this token goes up to the next row, that will increase the purchase power that you get for all of those cards that you have. And of course, at that point, everyone will modify that tracker on their player boards. You may have noticed this hexagon symbol over here, and those are what each one of the cards you have in your deck will be worth in victory points at the end of the game, depending on, again, what row that genre token is at. So if this goes up to here, then every Surrealism card can be spent as two buying power, but are still only worth one point at the end of the game, whereas going to here, each one of those is now worth two points at the end of the game. All right, that's finished our first action, and now we must perform a second. For this, we can perform any of the three actions, including doing another Acquire action. And one of the options is Haggle. This is super simple. You simply take one of the cards in your hand, and you put it into that action area, and then you draw two cards from your draw pile. This generally makes more sense to do as your first action if you're trying to draw into cards that you can then use for the second action of your turn. In this case, I don't think we are going to haggle. I think what we are going to do is acquire once again. The other option is showing, and I'll explain how that works later on in the game. So when we acquire, we can buy one card available, but it is worth noting that when you acquire twice in one turn, you are never allowed to purchase two cards from the same spot. What that means is since we already acquired a card from Gallery Cerulean on our turn, we are not allowed to acquire another one from that same area for our second action. Now I think for the second action, let's actually acquire a gold card. There are two banks over here. This one always has two of the three value gold cards on it at the start of our turns. And this one has all of the five value cards that are in the game. Now the five value gold cards do not have special text at the bottom. They are simply very lucrative for the purposes of actually purchasing other cards. Since I'd like to purchase one of these, let's focus in. As you can see at the Cadmium Bank, the cost is always going to be five in order to purchase one of these three value gold cards. And at the Sienna Bank, the cost is always eight in order to purchase a five value card. 
when we look at our current hand, we have one, two, three, four, five purchase power. Again, that's because the pop art and renaissance market tokens are still in the one value row. Now, you may be wondering what the special effect is of the other gold cards that we have in our hand, and this is pretty simple. All of the ones and twos have a special effect that give you plus two to your purchase power when purchasing one painting. So that's why this two would give you four for purchasing one painting, and this one gives three for purchasing a painting. Now, this is specifically for paintings. You cannot use this effect at the bottom to purchase new gold cards. With that in mind, I think we are going to use all of these to get one, two, three, four, five purchase power, and that will let us purchase one of these three value gold cards from the Cadmium Bank. Now, as you can see, there are two of these, and they're stacked up so that we can see the special effect at the bottom. We know that the top of all of these is always going to be a three at this bank. Now, we can select either one of these. This one says that we can permanently remove it from our deck to get eight purchase power when exhibiting one painting, and the bottom one says we get eight purchase power when buying one or two paintings in the same gallery. Now, when you use this effect, that means for that single action, you can actually purchase two paintings from a single gallery, which lets you get around the restriction of normally not being able to purchase twice from a gallery. Now, that restriction usually has to do with doing two overall actions, whereas this lets you purchase two paintings for a single action, which makes it even better. Honestly, I like both of these, but I think I'm going to go for this top one here. So that's going to give us a leg up when trying to exhibit a painting that we have in our hand, and I'll describe how that works later on in the tutorial. Now we do have to place all of the cards that we used for purchase power into the action slot that matches, and then the new card that we just purchased is going to go into that same action slot. After that, we then have to increase the market rating for gold. Much like the paintings, there is a gold market rating token, and when we purchase one of these three value cards, that gold rating goes up by three. The gold rating token is circular, and we can move it three spaces forward on the track. Now, the position of this token only matters for end game scoring, because obviously in the middle of the game, all of the gold cards are worth a purchase power equal to the number in the top corner. So, looking back at the market rating board, you'll notice on the right-hand side, it says gold. Now, this tells you how many victory points you will get at the end of the game for the sum total of the gold that you have in your deck. At the end of the game, we will add up all of the gold value from all of our cards, and then divide it by this specific modifier, and get one point rounded down for each one of those sets. As you can see, as this token goes up, that is going to get us more victory points up to a moment where it actually starts to get worse. So the ideal spot to have this token, if you have a bunch of gold in your deck, is to end the game with it in the 50 to 59 area. Going above that actually makes the divider worse for you. Now, it's worth noting that the gold value will always go up by 3 or 6, depending on which of the banks you go to, and you'll notice this little gold icon here on the rating track, and that makes it really easy to tell where the next jump is going to go for that gold rating token. At this point, we've performed two actions, which means our turn is coming to a close, but there are still a few things that we have to do before the next player gets to go. The first of these is we are going to take all of the cards in the Action 1 and Action 2 spot, and we are going to put them into our discard pile. After that, if we had any cards in our hand, we could optionally discard as many of them as we wanted to into our discard pile. And it's worth noting, you could discard zero if you wanted to, or your entire hand if that's what you feel like doing. After that, we are going to draw cards from the top of our deck until we have five cards in our hand, and if at this point we already had five or more cards in our hand, we obviously wouldn't draw any. In this case, we don't have any cards though, so we can draw one, two, three, four, five cards. Those will go into our hand, and you'll notice that there are no more cards here in the draw pile. Now, if we ever go to draw a card and there is no card here, that is the moment we will take our discard pile, shuffle it up, and place it over here face down to then act as a new draw pile that we can take from. Obviously, that's not the case just yet, but the next time we do go to draw, that is when we're going to shuffle up this discard. So, this is going to be the hand of cards that we can play with in the next round of the game, and we can figure out what we're going to do with this once we actually get there. Next up, we have to look up here to the galleries, and if any one of them has no cards in it at all, then we will perform a gallery reset for all four of them. In this case, though, we can see that none of the galleries are empty, so we're not going to do a reset, and I'll describe how that reset works later on in the tutorial. Next up, we're going to look over here to the Financial District, and if at the end of a player's turn there are not two cards over here at the Cadmium Bank, then we must draw until we have two showing. There is a draw deck over here that is full of the value three gold cards, so we can draw the top one and put that right over here. Now, there are three different types of cards that show up in this deck. We've already talked about two of them, and it looks like the third one just showed up. Down at the bottom of this one, as a special effect that will cause the card to go away, you can get eight buying power to purchase one five gold card. That is pretty convenient when you look back over here because the cost to purchase a five gold card is eight. So that means you can purchase this one and then use it in the future to essentially upgrade it into a five value gold card. 
Now, we never have to refresh the Sienna Bank because at the start of the game, we put all of the value fives over here. And if all of these are gone, then players won't be able to purchase more for the rest of the game. The final thing we have to do at the end of every one of our turns is check to see if the game is over. Our player board shows us the three different conditions for this. If at this point there are 12 or more paintings in the museum, or if the painting card deck has no cards in it, or if any market rating token is at 70 or over, then the end of the game will have been triggered. At that point, we will keep playing until everyone has taken the same number of turns, and then we will move into final scoring. Now, I'll talk about final scoring in more detail later on, and obviously we are nowhere near any of these endgame triggers, so I don't think I'm going to keep mentioning these at the end of each player's turn, because these are quite a ways off. Well, after checking the game end condition, our turn is officially over. I do want to mention, though, that during setup, players were allowed to look at all of the random painting cards that they got so you can make a plan for what you want to do with the cards that you know you already have before you shuffled up your deck and then drew the initial five cards. Now, at this point, we are indeed officially done with our turn, so the next player can go. Player order is clockwise in this game, so we can move around, and that means the blue player can now take their first turn of the game. So they can start by taking their first action. It looks like they've decided to acquire, and they're just going to play one pop art. This is currently worth one value, and that is all I need to go to Gallery Teal to purchase one of these. They're going to buy one of these pop arts, and they can play it right over there, and then the market rating for pop art will go up twice. It was at zero, so now it's at two. After that, for their second action, they are going to acquire again. In this case, they are going to play two of these one value cards for the bottom. That means this is three value to buy a painting twice, so that is six value total. And since they are using the bottom of these cards, these are permanently removed from their deck. With six value, they are going to buy yet another pop art. This is going to come from Gallery Cobalt, and then that is going to increase the market value of pop art by four more times. So it will go from two up to six. That's their two actions done, so they can finish their turn by discarding these, and then they have the option of discarding these cards in their hand if they want. But they've decided they're just going to keep both of them. Now they can draw until they have five or more cards in their hand. They have two, so they're going to draw three from the top of their deck, and then they can check the galleries. None of them are empty, so they don't have to be reset. And over here at the Cadmium Bank, there are two cards, so there's nothing for them to do over there as well. All right, their turn is done, so play will go clockwise over here to the red player. They've decided to start with an acquire action, and they are going to play this two for the bottom that says they get four buying power when purchasing a painting. And then on top of that, they are going to play both of these Renaissance cards from their hand. Renaissance is currently worth just one value, so that is going to be four plus two or six purchase power that they currently have for acquiring a painting. And with that, they are going to go to Gallery Cobalt and purchase this Renaissance card. That will increase the Renaissance market rating by four times, which will bring it up to four. And then for their second action, they are going to play this pop art that is worth one purchase power currently. And they are going to use that to go to Gallery Teal to purchase this pop art card right here. That will increase the market rating for pop art by two more steps. So it will go from six up to eight. And it is now just two steps away from increasing the purchase power of all of the pop art cards that players have in their hands. Although for the moment, it's still at the bottom row. So each of them is still just worth one purchase power. Well, let's finish their two actions so they can discard these. Then they have decided to discard this card from their hand, so they have nothing in their hand. After that, they will draw cards until they have five in their hand, and that's going to be the rest of their starting deck. Next up, we don't have to do a gallery reset because none of these are empty, although two of them have just one card, so I think that reset's coming soon. The cadmium bank is fine, and the game end conditions haven't been hit, so play will continue in clockwise order over to us. When we look at our hand, we currently have two Art Nouveau and one Surrealism card, and we know that we purchased another Surrealism card in our first turn of the game. I think what I'd like to do is acquire twice and pick up this Art Nouveau card and that Surrealism card. We can easily do this because this one costs one and that one costs three. So I think let's actually not permanently lose either of these gold cards. We'll just play them for the gold value in the top left and then potentially get rid of them later on when we really need the buying power that's listed at the bottom. So let's start by purchasing this Surrealism, which has a cost of one. We can just play this Art Nouveau out here as one purchase power. That will give us this, and then the market value for Surrealism will go up by two. It was at three, so now it's going to go to five. And then let's purchase this Art Nouveau card for a purchase price of three. Now we can get there by simply playing this two along with maybe this Surrealism card, so that is going to be three total. This can go over here, and then the Art Nouveau market tractor will go up by three. It hasn't moved at all yet, so it will go from zero up to three. 
Well, let's finish our two actions, although I'm going to make a slight change. Let's say instead of playing this value 2 gold card, we played these two each for a value of 1. That way we had 1, 2, 3 purchase power to take this, and we can keep this in our hand for the next turn, where we might better be able to use the extra benefit down there at the bottom. So we are done with our actions, and that means these will go away. I don't want to discard this card right here, and then when we go to draw four more cards to get our hand back up to five, we don't have any cards at all. So we have to shuffle up our discard pile, and then draw until we have five or more cards. After that, it's time to once again check the galleries, and for the first time in the game, at least one of the galleries does not have any cards in it. That means we are going to trigger a full gallery reset, and the first thing that we actually do is we get rid of the purchase token associated with the empty gallery, as well as any other empty galleries, and then we upgrade that purchase to the next number on this track that is a higher value than the previous number. Since this had a 1, we can look over here and see that the next highest number is 2. So this is removed, and the 2 will go right down over here. If this had been the 3, for example, then we would actually skip over the 2 and then replace that with a 4. And then later on, this 2 would replace the 1 wherever that was. Obviously, that is not the case, though. This was the 1, so the new price for gallery teal paintings will be 2. Once again, if multiple galleries were empty, we would do the same thing for all of them, starting at the left and working our way to the right. In this case, we only had one empty gallery, so we are done with that. And the next thing that we do is refresh the paintings for all of the galleries. The way this works is we are going to draw random paintings from the top of this deck until we have met the requirement for that gallery. The first two have a requirement of three cards. The second two have a requirement of two. It's worth noting during setup, you always put three cards into all of these. So that means Gallery Cobalt and Gallery Indigo do start the game with three. But when they are refreshed, they will only ever go up to two as the game is happening. We refresh by starting in the leftmost gallery and work our way to the right. So we're going to draw until there are three paintings here in Gallery Teal. Then at Gallery Cerulean, we will draw until there are three. After that, at Gallery Cobalt, we will draw until there are two. And finally, there's nothing to do at Gallery Indigo because there are already two or more cards in that gallery. All right, the gallery refresh is done, and there's nothing else for us to do because the cadmium bank is full and an endgame trigger has not been hit. This means it's now time for blue to go. After considering their options, they're going to start by playing this one card for a value of three to purchase one painting. They are going to purchase this surrealism painting over here from Gallery Cerulean. That has a cost of three, so they're fine, and then the rating for surrealism will go up by three. It was at five, so now it's at eight. After that, they're going to play all of these cards, getting them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 purchase power. And with that, they're going to purchase one of these threes. They've decided that they would like a value 5 gold card. So they'll take this one that can be played for 8 purchase power in order to purchase one of those gold cards when they use this in the future. They could, of course, hold on to this and use it as 3 buying power. They don't actually ever have to get rid of this for the bottom effect if they don't want to. They are done with their actions, and now they can draw back up to a hand of 5. They only have 2 cards in their deck, though, so they have to reshuffle. Then it looks like they will draw three cards, and there is just this to be refreshed, so we can draw a new one from the bank, and it looks like this one also lets you get a five gold card when you play it for its bottom effect. All right, blue is done, so that means red can go, and I imagine they are going to be acquiring much in the same way the rest of us have done so far in this game. Again, haggling usually makes sense when digging for something in particular, or if you want to do a big acquisition for your second action, and you just don't quite have enough purchasing power to make that happen. The last option is exhibiting, and I hope to talk about that soon. After thinking about their options, they're going to start by putting 5 purchase power down, and they are going to take this value 3 gold card that lets you buy 1 or 2 paintings, and also gives 8 purchase power when buying those paintings. After that, they're going to play this one-value gold card for the bottom. That is going to give them three purchase power when acquiring a painting. With that, they're going to go to Gallery Cerulean and purchase an Impressionism painting, and then increase the market rating of that by three. It was at zero, so now it goes up to three. All right, that has finished their actions, and now they're going to keep this, and they do need a new draw deck. There's nothing to reset on the board, so they are done with their turn. This means we can go, and it looks like we did draw our 3 value gold card into our hand. This gives us 8 purchase power when exhibiting a painting, and that is certainly something to consider for this turn. You know what, I think for our first action we are going to show. This means we can exhibit a painting at the museum, and in order to do this we are going to take a painting from our hand and place it into one of the 5 exhibitions that are currently out here at the museum. 
Now there is a cost that we have to pay in cards from our hand in order to go to these exhibits. We can see that is listed right over here at the top of each of them. Now before we do our very first exhibit of the game, we're going to take one of our ribbons and place it onto one of these bonuses that currently does not have any other ribbons on it. There are four options. The first two give discounts for the purchase price of doing that exhibit. This is minus two and that one's minus three. And the other ones just give you extra victory points. This one giving you one and that one giving you two points. Now, I think we want to go to Mixed Media Masterpieces, and that has a cost of 13. Now, I don't think I want to spend 13 from our hand, so instead, let's take this ribbon and place it right over here, giving us a discount of 3. So that means we now need to spend 10 monetary value from our hand to exhibit over here in Mixed Media Masterpieces. So let's look at our hand, and obviously we are going to have to use this card here for the bottom effect. That means we are going to lose the card, but we will also get 8 purchase power when exhibiting one painting, which is what we are doing. Now we need to get to 10 because we have 13 minus 3, and that is 8 of it, so we need 2 more. And I figure let's use this card right here to get the other 2. Now the 3 value is permanently removed, but the 2 value will go into the action 1 area of our player board. Now that we have paid to exhibit in the Mixed Media Masterpieces, it's time to actually take a painting from our hand and put it over here. Now you may have noticed these tokens, and we put them randomly out into each one of these exhibits at the start of the game, and in order to exhibit into that area, you must have a painting that matches one of these genre tokens. Over here at Mixed Media Masterpieces, there are spots for two Impressionism pieces, one Surrealism piece, and one Art Nouveau, and we just have Art Nouveau as options in our hand, so we can take one of these, and I think we'll go with this one, and then exhibit that right over here. Now we're going to take the matching token and we're going to cover up the topmost victory point icon associated with that exhibition. In this case that is a 10, so we can cover that up and immediately get 10 victory points. We start at 0, so that means we are now at 10, and the next thing that we do is we take one of our ribbons and we place it on top of this piece of art so that everyone knows that we are the player who exhibited that painting. Now it's worth noting that players only have 9 ribbons in front of them at the start of the game, and you are not allowed to exhibit if you've used up all of your ribbons by exhibiting your paintings. Now before we move on from these genre tokens, I would like to point out that some of them are gray. This is wild, so that means if you exhibit over here, you can either go for the Impressionism, the Pop Art, or the Renaissance, or you could just take this and that counts as any one of them. If you put an Impressionism over here, you could choose to take this token and put it there, or you could take this wild token and put it over there. Either one of those would be an option for you in this example. Now the next thing that happens is the market rating is going to go up significantly for the painting that was just exhibited because people can now come over here and really admire that genre of painting. In this case, this is Art Nouveau, and in the Mixed Media Masterpieces it shows a 7 market rating increase. So we can find the Art Nouveau rating token, and it was at 3, so when we add 7 to that, it goes all the way over here to 10. Now that is the next row up, which means all Art Nouveau cards for their purchasing power are now going to be worth 2, and at this point, all players need to update their personal boards to show this. We will all do that by simultaneously finding our Art Nouveau token, and we slide it up to the 2 purchase power slot on our boards. Well, that's finished our show action, and we do have to take another action, and I think let's use our Art Nouveau card in our hand as two purchase power. Again, we know that because we can look down over here and see the Art Nouveau is at the two row, and of course we can also look at the market rating board to see that as well. With this two power, I think let's go over to Gallery Teal, because there is an Art Nouveau painting over here that I think I'd like to take, especially considering how much we've been pushing up that market rating. The cost for this at Gallery Teal is 2, and of course we got that by playing this Art Nouveau card for 2 value, and now we can increase the market rating for Art Nouveau 2 more times. That will bring it up to 12, and that means over the course of our turn we increase the market rating for Art Nouveau by 9 steps, which is pretty great considering we do have a few of those cards, although technically we have one less in our deck because of course we exhibited it, which means it stays out there in the museum for the rest of the game. Now, I do want to emphasize that this is still our card, and we know that, of course, because we put this ribbon on top of it. We will, of course, never play this card for its market value because it's not in our deck, but during endgame scoring, this could be worth points to us depending on the museum tiles that are unlocked. These tiles are up here at the top, and during setup, we randomly took five of them and put them on top of each one of these exhibits. Now, these are going to be unlocked at the end of the game if every single one of these tokens have been removed from that specific exhibition. So, for example, if all of these were placed like this, then that would unlock this to give points at the end of the game. And this one says closely held, and it says the player with the fewest paintings in the museum will get five points. So that's interesting. You actually get a benefit for not exhibiting that much if this specific tile is unlocked.
Once again, these are only unlocked once all of these tokens are used. Now over here at the Textures of Time, we can see that Nouveau Kids are on the block, and it says that all Art Nouveau painting cards in the museum are worth three extra points for the player who played them. Now this is only going to be active if all three of these happen, and since we've already put an Art Nouveau card into the museum, we are much more motivated to try and exhibit over here into Textures of Time to unlock this scoring to get us those points. Now, it is possible that at the end of the game, none of these exhibitions have had all of their tokens pushed over to the left. In this case, we are still going to score at least one of these, though, because we will look to the exhibition that has the most cards played into it, and then that exhibition's museum scoring tile will activate. If there is a tie between multiple exhibitions for having the most cards, then all of those tied exhibitions will activate. But again, this only happens if none of the five exhibitions had all of their tokens used. If even one of them has that, then only the exhibitions that used all of their tokens will have their scoring tile performed. Now, there are a few different scoring tile types. We've seen this one already, and over here in the Poetic Patterns, there's a similar one that scores three points for every Surrealism card placed anywhere into the museum if it's unlocked. The next type involves this one right here. We can look at the specifics, and it says the player who owns the most pop art painting cards, including the museum, will score points. The player with the most will get six, second most will get three, and third most will get two, with friendly ties for the specific scoring type. Now, there are different tiles of this for the different genres. In this game, this one is associated over here, and once again, that counts the cards in your overall deck, as well as the cards that you've played out here into the museum, which is another reason you have to put these flags down to know which one of those cards you put down. So far we've talked about four of these, and the fifth one for this game is Panned by Critics. That specifically says that the genre with the fewest paintings in the museum will have each of the paintings in the museum get two more points for the players who put them down. Now during setup we randomly pulled these out of a much larger stack of options, but on top of that I do want to point out that the game comes with more advanced options which all offer conditional scoring based off of the gold cards that you have in your deck at the end of the game. The rules suggest you don't play with these for your first couple of games, so that's why we're not using them or explaining them during this tutorial. Well, we've performed both of our actions, and this was a pretty great turn for us, so now we can finish our turn by discarding these. I think we'll keep this card in our hand so we can draw four more from the top of our deck. Ooh, nice, and we drew an Art Nouveau card, so that is worth two purchase power if we use it that way on our next turn. After that, we have to do a reset, and I just realized that technically at the end of the red player's turn, there was something to reset over here on the board. The Cadmium Bank does need another one of these value three cards, and this one lets you exhibit one painting, getting you eight purchasing power. So that should have been there already, and at this point, we are done with our turn. That means blue can go, and they've decided to get rid of this gold card for four purchase power when taking a painting, and then they're going to play these two cards out as well. So those are two plus four or six purchase power and they will use that to buy an Impressionism painting. So far in the game, players seem to be largely ignoring these, and it looks like Blue now wants to start investing. Now that is going to increase the market value of Impressionism by four times. So it will go from three up to seven. And then for their second action, they're going to play these two cards for two purchase power total, and they will take another Impressionism card. That had a cost of two, and it's going to increase the market value of Impressionism by two more times. So it goes up to 9, and it just barely did not increase the purchase power of those Impressionism paintings. That's finished their actions, so they can discard and then draw a new hand. And then there's nothing to reset, so now the red player can take their turn. They're going to start by playing a Renaissance and Pop Art card for one purchase value each, and that will let them take this Renaissance card, and that will also increase the Renaissance market value by 2. After that, they're going to play a Renaissance and Art Nouveau card for three purchase power total, because again, Art Nouveau cards are now worth two purchase power. So with that three, they are going to purchase this Impressionism card, and that is going to increase the market value of Impressionism three times. It was at nine, so now it goes up to 12, and now everyone can increase the purchase power of Impressionism by once on their boards. After we have all done that, red is done with their actions, so these are going to be discarded. They want to keep this card in their hand so they can draw four more. And now we definitely have to do a gallery reset, since at least one of these is empty. In this case, there's actually two that are empty. When we have multiple empty galleries, we start from the left and work our way over. So gallery teal is going to go from two to the next higher number, which is a four. And then after that, in gallery cerulean, it will go from a three to the next highest number, which is a five. 
So it's getting quite a bit more expensive to purchase from these galleries over here, but it's also becoming more efficient from a price to rating increase perspective over here and these galleries, which have not yet been emptied. After that, we now have to refresh all of the galleries so that they are up to their limit shown right here. So we will get three into Gallery Teal, three into Gallery Cerulean, and then Gallery Cobalt needs to go up to two, so that will take one card. At this point, red is done, so now we get to take our turn. We do have an Art Nouveau card in our hand, so that is worth two purchase power. And what that means is if we wanted to purchase paintings, we could get three by removing this permanently from our deck. Then we could get four, five, six, seven, eight. So technically, we could spend all of our cards to purchase one painting from Gallery Indigo. And there is an Art Nouveau card over there, so I feel pretty tempted to do that. Now, the thing is, if we did that, we would have no other cards in our hand for our other action. If that is the case, that you spend all of the cards in your hand for your first action, then you forfeit taking the second action. Otherwise, if you have any cards in your hand, you must take two actions. Now, we could, of course, forfeit that second action, but I figure we may as well haggle first. This lets us spend one card to draw two cards from the draw pile. Now, I think we could certainly get rid of this Renaissance card right now. It's relatively low on the market rating track, so we can spend this card to draw two from the deck. So, let's see what we find. In this case, we found a pop art and a surrealism, and now I think let's go for the plan that we talked about. We will use this to get three buying power and then lose it. Then we need five more, so we could play this for two more, so we are now up to five. And then we need to play three more, and I figure we will put the pop art and two surrealism cards down over here. At that point, we've reached eight purchase power. So we can buy this Art Nouveau card over here from Gallery Indigo, and then importantly, increase the market rating for Art Nouveau by six steps on the track. It was at 12, so now it's going to go all the way up to 18, and that has not affected the purchase power just yet, but it is very close to making all of those Art Nouveau cards that we have three value when we play them instead of two. It's also worth noting as this goes up, the cards that we have in our deck at the end of the game will also be worth extra victory points. So this is good for an in-game effect of having more purchase power, but also an end-game effect of getting extra points. It is worth noting you do not get these points for any cards that you have exhibited out there into the museum. All right, we're done with actions, so we can discard all of this. And I think we will just go ahead and discard this Surrealism card as well. Now we can draw five cards. And then we can check the board, and there's nothing to refresh. So our turn is done, and now the blue player can go. The first thing they are going to do is acquire this pop art card. That is going to cost five, so they are going to play this for two. They're not going to use the bottom just yet. Then they're going to use this Impressionism card for two more value, because, of course, that is at the two spot on their board. And then this pop art right here is just worth one. That's two plus two plus one, or five, and that will let them purchase this pop art card, so they can place that right over here. And then Pop Art will go up three times on the market rating board. It was at eight, so now it goes up to 11, and we can all upgrade our Pop Art tokens on our boards to the two value spot. After we have all done that, Blue can take another action. And they've decided to play this three value card for the bottom effect. That says they can remove this and then get eight value for purchasing a five gold card. So they are going to get rid of this and then pay the eight that they need to take this five. So that is going to go over here in their area. After that, the market rating for gold is going to go up six times, and I just realized that the last two times that any players bought these threes, I actually forgot to increase the market value by three for each of those. So it's going to go up six right now, and it should have already gone up by three two other times, so I'm going to push it up 12 spots now. It's obviously very important to pay attention to these market rating increases because this is where a large part of our points are going to come from. So the gold should have gone up by three two times already, and now it's going to go up by six, bringing it to the 15 spot. And if the game was to end right now, we would divide our overall gold value in our decks by five and then round down to get one point for each of those sets. Now, it's very likely this will go quite a bit more up throughout the game to make the gold cards that we have worth more points once it's over. Well, blue is done with their actions, so they can discard all of this. And then they're going to keep this card and draw four more, so they need three more, and they'll make a new deck for that. After that, there's nothing to update on the market, so now it's time for the red player to go. They can start by looking at their cards, and then they've decided to acquire a painting that requires a cost of eight. They're going to start by permanently getting rid of this card, which gets them four purchase value. And then they'll add two more with this pop art card, and then two more to that with this impressionism. So that gets them all the way to eight, which means they have enough to buy this Renaissance card, and that will increase the Renaissance market rating by six steps. 
it was at six, so now it goes all the way up to 12, and now we can all increase our Renaissance markers to the two value spot. After that, the red player gets to take another action, and they've decided to start by playing this three. They're not going to do the bottom. That would get them eight value for purchasing paintings, and they could purchase two paintings for one action from the same gallery, but they're going to save that for later and instead use this for three purchase value, and then they'll use this Renaissance card in their hand for two purchase value. Remember, this was worth one purchase value originally at the start of their turn, but their first action made it better, and now it's worth two. So that brings them up to five which is going to be enough for them to go to the Cadmium Bank to purchase another one of these three value gold cards. They're going to take this one right here, and then the gold market rating will go up by three. It was at 15, so now it's up to 18. And that has finished up the red player's turn. Now they're going to discard all of this and then draw five more cards. They only have three here, so they have to reshuffle their deck. And then when they look to the board, they do have to draw another one of these three value gold cards. This is another one that lets you buy one of the five values for its discard effect. After that, red is done, so we get to go again. Now we have three of these gold cards in our hand, which is interesting. We could potentially get rid of these for a ton of value, and of course that would also make our deck smaller. A smaller deck means we would go through it faster and potentially get two more powerful cards that we have in our deck quicker. Now, these two would get us four purchase value, and this one would get us three. So if we got rid of all three of these right now, then that is a minimum of 11 purchase value for buying paintings. We also have one Surrealism painting and one Art Nouveau, so that is one plus two. So, all told, that is 14 purchase value for paintings from our hand. When we look out here at the market, there are two Art Nouveau cards that we could potentially purchase. That would be 5 plus 4, which is just 9 purchase value, which is well under 14. And I think we should do that. We've purchased a bunch of these already, and we've really been pushing up that market rating for it. And the more of these that we have, the more purchase power we will have in our deck when that market rating goes even higher. By purchasing these, it is going to get to the 3 spot, so that means in the future, these will have the same purchase power as one of these cards over here. And of course, that could continue to go up even more. Let's start by purchasing this Art Nouveau card for four. We could discard this in order to get four value, but we don't really need to. Right now we could just spend these two right here to get the four that we need, and then we can purchase that Art Nouveau card, and then we will increase the market rating for Art Nouveau by two steps. It was at 18, so now it goes up to 20, and that means all of the Art Nouveau cards are worth three purchase power when played. So every player will increase this stat on their boards. And now for our next action, you'll notice we have an Art Nouveau card in our hand. So we can play this for three, and then Surrealism for four, and then this coin for a five. And that is the five that we need to purchase this other Art Nouveau card to finish off a turn that is very focused on Art Nouveau. Now that is going to increase the rating by three steps, which will bring it from 20 up to 23. All right, that's finished our actions. So we can discard all of this and then draw a new hand of five cards. And then there's nothing to reset on the market, although it is getting a bit thin at these two galleries. This means we are done with our turn, so now blue can go. They can start by looking at their hand. The first thing they've decided to do is play Impressionism down for haggling. Now that's going to let them draw two more cards from the top of their deck. And then for their second action, they will show. They're going to put this five gold card down, and then this Impressionism, which is two more, bringing them to seven. Then Surrealism gets them to eight, and Renaissance gets them up to ten. Finally, they're going to play a pop art card, which adds two more, so they are up to 12. They are going to be exhibiting this pop art card from their hand over here into the swatches and symbolism, because that does have a cost of 12. Now, this is their first exhibition, so they can cover up one of these spots, and if they went there, that would mean they get a discount, so they could have done something different, but since they fully paid this off, they've decided to go over here to take the two extra victory points. So, that means they can get those points immediately which will bring them up to two, and then up here they put Pop Art down. Now they can take this Pop Art token or this Wild token for this placement, and they're going to take the Wild token, and they'll cover up the top spot, which is going to get them nine more victory points. That means they go up to 11, and then the market rating for Pop Art will go up six times. It was at 11, so now it's up to 17. Finally, Blue does have to put one of the ribbons on top of this card they just exhibited. So far in this game, Blue has been purchasing quite a few pop art cards, so it's not that surprising to see them try to unlock this bonus right here, which gives extra points to the player who has the most pop art cards in their deck and out here in various exhibitions. There do need to be three more exhibitions over here to Swatches and Symbolism to actually unlock that before the game ends. All right, Blue is done with their turn. And there's nothing to reset over here on the board. That means Red can go. So they can look at their cards. 
and they're going to start off by playing a couple of Renaissance cards for two value each, along with this one value card. So that is five total, and that is enough for them to purchase one of these three value gold cards from the Cadmium Bank. They've decided to take this one, which lets them discard it to get eight value when exhibiting a painting, and then the market value for gold will go up three times. It was at 18, so now it goes up to 21. After that, Red is going to play both of these cards over here to do an acquire action. This Art Nouveau is worth three to them, and then they're going to use this for two, so that is five total. And they're going to use that to take this Renaissance card from the Gallery Cerulean. Now that is going to increase the Renaissance rating three times, which will bring it from 12 up to 15. Well, that's finished their actions, so they can now draw a new hand. And then out here at the galleries, there is at least one that's empty, so we have to do a reset. This 5 is going to get upgraded into a 7, because that's the next lowest number that's higher than the number it was. And now we're going to put one card into Teal, three cards into Cerulean, and then one card over here into Gallery Indigo. After that, we do need one new card over here in the Cadmium Bank, and this one can be discarded to get a purchase power when exhibiting a painting. All right, Red is done with their turn, so that means we now get to go. Huh, it looks like we only have four cards in our hand. I meant to draw five, so let's just take another one, because you always start every hand of the game with at least five cards in your hand. You could potentially have more if you haggle a bunch, and then don't discard cards at the end of your turn. Now, this is what we're looking at. We've got a couple Surrealism, which are still just worth one value each. We've got a couple Art Nouveau, which are worth three each, and this Renaissance is worth two. So that means if we were to liquidate our entire hand to try and purchase things, that would be three plus three or six, plus two, which gets us to eight, plus two more, which gets us to 10 total. Now, one thing I'd love to do is take this Art Nouveau card right over here. It costs eight though, and that would be eight out of our 10, which would leave us with two left over, and we couldn't really do anything with two at this point in the game. So if we went for that plan, we would probably haggle first and then acquire that card for our second action. That does seem pretty good. Going up six more times with the Art Nouveau rating tracker is pretty great, honestly. But there's also something to be said for purchasing multiple other cards. In particular, we have these Surrealism cards, which are currently only worth one value, but they are just two steps away on that market track from being worth two, and we do have these in our deck already. There's a couple of these out here as well on the board. So I think instead of continuing to go crazy on Art Nouveau, let's spread out a little bit and take this Surrealism card for our first acquire. That means we need six value, so we can use these two Art Nouveaus, because they are three each. We can then take this and put it over here, and then increase the rating for Surrealism four times. It was at eight, so it'll go up to 12, and then we can all increase our Surrealism tokens to the two value spot on our boards. After that, we have to take another action, and suddenly these two Surrealism cards that we have in our hand are worth two each instead of one. So that means our overall purchase power for the three cards that we have left is six which means we could certainly afford one of these over here, but we also have enough to pick up one of these three value gold cards from the Cadmium Bank, and I think that's probably going to be a better call for us as we try to get into the middle stages of the game and have more lucrative hands to potentially do more exhibiting. In particular, this one can be discarded permanently to get eight value for exhibiting, and I think I like the idea of that. So we're going to play these out to get six value. Obviously, we only needed five, and you never get change if you overpay, but that's fine. So we can take this and put it in front of us, and then we can increase the gold rating by three. So it'll go up 24. And now we can discard all of these and draw five more cards. We only have two, so now we can make a new draw deck. And then we can draw three more cards. After that, we have to draw a new three value gold card for the Cadmium Bank. And this one lets you purchase a five gold card when you discard it permanently. All right, it looks like we are done with our turn, so blue can go. They've decided to start things off by playing all four of these cards into action one for Acquire. As you can see, that's three pop art at two value each, plus one Impressionism at two value. So that is eight value total. And with that, they've decided to get into the Art Nouveau game. That's been going up quite a bit, and they figure they would like to have one of these cards in their area. It seems like Art Nouveau is going to score pretty well at the end of the game, and of course when they play this in the middle of the game, it currently gives more value than any of the other paintings. Speaking of the value, Art Nouveau can now go up six times on the market rating board. It's currently at 23, so it goes all the way up to 29, just one step away from getting up here, making those Art Nouveau cards worth four money when played in the middle of the game. After that, Blue has one card left, and they're going to play it. This is a two gold card, and they're going to get rid of it permanently to get four buying power, and they will use that to purchase this pop art card, because so far this game they've been very fixated on getting pop art into their deck. Now that's going to increase the rating of pop art twice, 
which means it is just one step away from making those pop art cards worth three value during the game, and of course that increases the number of points you get for them once the game is over. Well, Blue is done with their turn, so they can discard all of this. They have just one card in their deck, so they need to make a new one. And then after drawing, they can check the board, and it looks like there's nothing to reset. This means it's now time for the red player to go. And they've decided to start by playing all four of these cards down to acquire. Each one of those is going to give them two value, so that is eight value total. And they're going to use that to pick up this Impressionism card. That will increase its rating by six times on the market board. So it will go from 12 up to 18. Then for their second action, they're going to acquire one of these five value gold cards. They're going to get rid of this card entirely to get eight value in order to do that. And then after they do this, the gold token on the market rating track will go up by six bases. It was at 24, so it's going to go up to 30. That has finished their actions. And then at the end of their turn, it looks like we do have to do a gallery update. Gallery Indigo is empty for the first time in the game, so this 8 is going to go away, and the next highest number is a 9, actually, so that's not that big of a difference. Now we can refresh all of the galleries. It looks like Teal is going to get one card, then Cobalt will get one, and then Indigo will get two. Well, it's now time for us to go, and we've got a pretty whopping hand here. We have three Art Nouveau, which are worth three each, so that is nine buying power. Then Surrealism is two, and so is Pop Art. With this hand in mind, I think we are going to want to be showing, but if we did that, we'd use all of our cards, so I think for our first action, let's actually haggle. Now, I'm planning on showing Surrealism, so let's put this Pop Art down. We will haggle to draw two more cards into our hand. Oh my goodness, and we got another Art Nouveau and a Renaissance. Now, when we go to exhibit a card, we have quite a bit of buying power. In particular, these four Art Nouveau are going to be worth 12, plus this Renaissance is two more, getting us up to 14. With 14, we could go to any of these three, although if we are exhibiting Surrealism, we can't actually put that here into the swatches of symbolism. I suppose we could exhibit this Renaissance over here now that we drew that into our hand. Now, if we went into this spot, we would get nine points. If we went here, we'd get nine. And if we went over to Mixed Media Masterpieces, we would get 10. So that's one point better. Now, that being said, if five cards exhibit into poetic patterns by the end of the game, then this says that all Surrealism painting cards in the museum are going to be worth three extra points. So with that in mind, I feel somewhat tempted to just go over here. It's one less point, but we'd be pushing a condition a little bit more to try and get more points if we do indeed put this Surrealism card down, and I think we should. So with that in mind, we need 11 purchase power to do this. And I think we should get there by putting three Art Nouveaus to get us to nine, and then this Renaissance, which will get us up to 11. Now we can leave this in our hand and potentially use it on our next turn, and then exhibit this Surrealism card into the Poetic Patterns exhibition. Now this is not our first exhibition, so we obviously don't put a token up here anymore. It looks like the red player is the only person who hasn't, so when they do their first exhibition, they will get either a negative two discount, or they will get an extra point. Now we're going to put this right over here, and we can put this there, or we could put that one over, and I suppose, yeah, maybe we'll put this one over here like that. Now that is going to get us nine victory points, and we were at 10, so this is going to bring us all the way up to 19. And then the market rating for Surrealism is going to go up five times. It was at 12, so it goes up to 17. Finally, we do have to mark that this is our painting by putting one of these ribbons down. All right, that has finished up our turn, so we can discard all of this, and I think we certainly want to keep this in our hand for the next turn, so now we can just draw four cards from the top of our deck. Huh, I kind of forgot we had so many Surrealism cards in there, so that was nice increasing the market rating of those. It didn't quite increase their overall value just yet, but it did get them close. Our turn is coming to an end, and we have nothing to reset, so it looks like Blue can now take their turn. After considering their options, they want to acquire this Pop Art card. That's going to cost six, so they're going to put a five down, as well as this impression, which gets them two more, so they're up to seven, which means they're overpaying, but they're still fine with that. They can take this, and then the pop art rating will go up four times. It was at 19, so now it goes up to 23, and we can all modify our boards to show that pop art paintings are now worth three money value when played. After changing that, they do get to take another turn. And they've decided to play two pop art cards that were in their hand, and each of those is now worth three value instead of two. So that gets them to six, and then they'll play Surrealism, which is worth two, so they are up to eight. And with that, they've decided to buy this Impressionism painting from the Gallery Cerulean. They slightly overpaid, but they're still fine with that, and now the Impressionism market rating will go up by three. It was at 18, so now it's up to 21, and since it went up a row, we can now all modify our player boards. 
After that, it looks like the blue player is done with their turn, so they can discard these and then draw a new hand. And then it looks like there's nothing to update over here. That means their turn is officially over, so red can go. After considering their options, they're going to start by haggling for one. They don't currently have a deck, though, so they do have to shuffle this up and then draw two cards from it. Then for their second action, they would like to exhibit for the first time in the game. So that is a show action, and they are going to play all of these cards out to do that. So this is 1 plus 3, which is 4. Then both of these pop art give them 3 value, so that gets them to 10. And then the Renaissance is worth 2, so they are up to 12 value total when they go to exhibit at the museum. This is their first time exhibiting, so they have to place this ribbon down to either get an extra point or get a discount of 2. The discount of two would let them go over here to mix to media masterpieces, but they've decided they're just going to go over here and get the point, and then they are going to exhibit this Renaissance painting over here in swatches of symbolism. It looks like they couldn't even exhibit this in mixed media masterpieces because there are no Renaissance or wild tokens left in that area. So they can take their one bonus point, and then they can put this ribbon down to show that's theirs, and then this Renaissance token will go here covering up the nine. That means they will get nine points, bringing them up to ten, and then after that, the Renaissance market rating will go up six times. This is pretty good for the red player, considering they purchased a few of those already, because as you can see, that'll take it from 15 up to 21, and now everyone can update their player boards, because Renaissance paintings are now worth three money value when played to pay for other actions. After that, we can see that only Surrealism paintings are still worth two, so as these values are going up, the power of the actions that we can do is also going up. Of course, as the game goes on, the paintings in the galleries are getting more expensive, and of course the exhibitions are getting fuller, so we can afford to show in the more expensive exhibitions, and those do give more points, but in addition to that, they also give even higher market rating bumps for the genres that are placed there. Well, Red is done with their actions, so they can discard all of this and then draw a new hand. And then there's nothing to refresh out here on the board. And then the final thing they do is check the end game condition, which is of course something that happens at the end of every player's turn. I've just not been mentioning it for most of our turns. Now I think at this point in the game, I'm not going to continue playing. Let's now refresh on how the game ends and then discuss how we calculate our final scores. Once again, the game end will be triggered once there are 12 or more paintings shown at the museum. Currently there's four, so we're on our way to that, and obviously those exhibitions become easier to do as we have more lucrative paintings to play from our hand. The next option says the painting card deck has no cards remaining. Currently, there are quite a few cards left in here. Now, I haven't counted it exactly, but it looks like we've gone through about half of the deck at this point. Once again, this doesn't mean every card needs to be purchased from the galleries, we just have to end a player's turn where there are no cards left in that draw deck. The final thing says if any of the market ratings, including the gold rating token, has reached the 70 mark on the board. And obviously we aren't quite there yet, although as we do more exhibitions because we can afford to, these tokens are going to go up even faster because those exhibitions push the tokens even faster than purchasing from galleries do. Once again, once any of those triggers have been hit, we will continue playing until everyone has taken the same number of turns, and then the game will be over, and it will be time to calculate our final scores. In order to do this, each player can take their player board and flip it over to the back side. This has a nice cheat sheet for telling you where you're going to get your points, and it also has a grid for doing some easy math and also putting all of your cards. You will then take all of the cards in your deck, your hand as well as your discard pile, and then sort them. You can put all of your gold cards over here on the table, and then you can put the rest of your cards on these different spots, depending on how many points they are worth. Remember, the value of your cards is going to be dependent on the row where these genre tokens are. When we focus back over here, currently all of the genres except for Surrealism are worth two points each for the cards that you have, and Surrealism is worth one, but of course when the game is over, these tokens are likely to be much higher up. So once again, you can look at this, and it has spots for one all the way up to seven points. So depending on the marker positions on these boards, you can take every one of your cards and place them on the table in front of you into each of these spots, and then do some easy math to see that number times the number of cards you have over there, and then take those points out there on the victory point track. Then you can also take all of the gold cards that you have over here and add up the gold value of each of them. You will then divide that by the modifier over here associated with the row where the gold rating token has ended. And once again, I'd like to point out that this gets better until this spot, and then it actually gets worse. So if the token is over here, you might not actually want to buy more gold because it'll make the modifier worse for you, but it'll also make the modifier worse for other opponents. So if you think other people have more gold than you do, then maybe you do push this up more to actually hurt their victory point score.
Let's once again focus on the back of the player board, because up here for endgame scoring, it says that we score the paintings in the way that I've already described, we score our gold the way I've just described, and then we also score for the museum bonuses that are unlocked on the board. I described unlocking these in detail earlier on in the tutorial. Remember, the short version is once all of these tokens are put out here for one of these exhibitions, that will unlock this specific token, and then players will potentially get points for it depending on the condition on that token. And if none of the galleries have all of their tokens used, then the galleries with the most paintings exhibited will have their conditional token scored. Once everyone gains all of these points, the player with the most victory points will be the winner, and if there's a tie, then the player who has more of their paintings exhibited in the museum will break the tie in their favor. If there's still a tie, then those players will share in the victory. Well, at this point, I do believe I've taught just about all of the rules to the game, which means this tutorial is coming to a close. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to play Art Deco, and if, while this game was going on, there was any part of the game that really jumped out to you, or maybe a turn where you feel like the player should have done something differently, then please comment down below because I love to see that kind of feedback. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.